Alrighty, good morning, good evening, good night, depending on where you are in the world. Thank you so much to the 2,400 people who registered for this trend watching webinar on the future of betterment. We're going to be looking at six trends shaping the evolution of health and wellness in 2016 and beyond. We've got 90 slides to go through in 30 minutes. I'm going to be moving at quite a clip, which is fitting for this health and wellness theme. So do try to keep up. So who are you listening to right now? Whose sultry tones are these? I am Maxwell Luthi, the director of Trends and Insights for Trendwatching's content team, and I'm based out of our New York office. Um, last year, I co-wrote our recently released book, Trend Driven Innovation, with three other esteemed authors from Trendwatching. And those of you who know Trendwatching well know we're not just about the trend briefings or um, the trend report, but we're increasingly working on empowering you to get from insights to ideas. So my job um, for the North American region in the last 18 months or so has been to travel around and do you know, uh, keynotes, internal workshops to help clients such as um, Disney, Samsung, and beyond get from insights to ideas because tracking trends is just the beginning. It's really about applying these insights and generating new products, services, experiences, and marketing um, from those insights to stay ahead of emerging expectations. So remember, throughout this presentation, you need to consider how you can adapt and apply these trends for your brand to delight your customers. Right, so let's get into it. Change is afoot, and you've seen it yourselves. We're going from the hedonistic days of bar crawls to the clean living juice crawl. Yes, that's real. And you know, models are no longer being packed in fur coats. It's better if you're a celebrity to be packed in your active wear. And people are turning away from heavy metal and taking up heavy metal yoga. Okay, I'm exaggerating, I'm generalizing, I'm a trend analyst, of course I am, but why is this happening? Well, to understand that, let's go back to our reliable friend Maslow and his hierarchy of needs. As we are in an increasingly abundant global economy, and yes, the progress comes in fits and starts, but consumers with more money to spend are climbing up and ticking off these boxes of their physiological needs, their needs for safety, their social needs. I'm still struggling with esteem, but many consumers now have enough income and enough abundance of products and services to strive for self-actualization. They're climbing up this pyramid like it's an obstacle in a Tough Mudder course. Of course, Tough Mudder is highly tied in to self-actualization. And in fact, on the way into the office today, in Soho, I saw this scribbled on a wall, you're not defined by your things. So for consumers who realize that you know, the things they've been collecting, and even within the experience economy, the experiences they've been collecting um, aren't filling that sort of hole uh, inside them. They're striving for self-actualization. And let's not overcomplicate it. This is really all about reaching one's potential, becoming a better version of yourself, otherwise known as betterment. Now, the good news is, Betterment fits into this big picture of the massive consumer landscape that we've been tracking at Trendwatching, and premium clients will recognize these. These are the 16 mega trends within our trend framework. So Betterment is one of those massive shifts that we're constantly tracking, uh, understanding how consumers and brands are striving for that universal quest for self-improvement. Because guess who's responsible? In a consumer society, for helping consumers achieve their self-actualization. Yes, of course, it's all of you tuned in to this webinar. So you've got to think about how you can make it happen. And we're focusing on the sort of health and wellness side of self-actualization. Of course, it's more complicated than that. You know, there's ethical and spiritual self-actualization, but we're focusing on health and wellness. However, don't think that that means we're focusing on health as self-enrichment, uh, sorry, just you know, health for visiting the doctor. We're actually talking about it more as a sort of achievement, something you strive towards, a, a status symbol even. So we have six trends to get through here. We're going from one to six. It's gonna be a lot to take in, but of course, as soon as I'm done talking, this webinar is gonna be available on our YouTube channel, so you can go through it and check out any details you may have missed 
the first time around. So let's get going. Our first trend is ambient wellness, health-boosting features embedded into the environment. Now, look, we all want to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, in his prime. However, Game of Thrones is back on TV. I promise there's no spoilers in this webinar, but Game of Thrones is back on TV. So really, we're, we're kind of too lazy to achieve this self-actualization to get to that Arnie level. In particular, I mean, I don't want to pick on the US, and I'm probably uh, partially responsible for this statistic, but fewer than 3% of Americans meet the basic criteria for a healthy lifestyle. Um, so that's kind of alarming. We're increasingly focused on being healthy, but consumers are falling short of it. So brands are stepping in to save the day. They've recognized that particularly you know, time-pressed urbanites who are especially competitive in terms of mental, uh, reaching their mental and physical peak can't quite reach their personal goals. So brands are embedding these innovations into the environment to provide those boosts for consumers. Our first example comes from the Netherlands, uh, where like the UK, my home country, the winters can get a little dark and dreary, and that impacts your physical and mental well-being. So this partnership's fantastic from Starbucks and Philips. They put these Philips lamps, which uh, project natural light into several coffee of the coffee shops during winter. So just 20 minutes of exposure to this lamp, you don't even need to do anything, you don't need to move a muscle, will make you feel better, will make you feel enriched and re-energized. That is ambient wellness at work. Uh, sticking within a lighting theme, Qatar Airways is the first airline to roll out the new, um, the new passenger plane from Airbus. And this passenger plane has an LED internal lighting system with 13 million different settings. And that might seem a little gratuitous, but actually it allows them to, you know, the most micro amount mimic the natural light at the destination you're flying to. So when you step off this plane, you don't feel jet lagged. You're ready to get going with your day. You're ready to pursue more of that self-actualization. Headspace is a company that creates a sort of guided meditation apps. And they realized, you know, the phone wasn't enough to help us escape the sort of stress of our environment. So they partnered with an LA-based architectural firm to create these beautiful, organic-looking pods, which they hope to install in public spaces in parks, in airports, in museums, so that you can sit in one of these pods. Uh, you probably wouldn't want to bring a toddler in with you if you're trying to meditate, but you can plug into your phone, fire up the app, and you know, experience some mindfulness. Of course, you're all familiar that you know, mindfulness is probably the, the latest buzzword. It's the latest thing that consumers are trying to achieve in their pursuit of self-actualization. And then a more playful example from Bogota. This is a, a billboard from KitKat that fits in with their overall messaging about helping you take a break. So they created these um, you know, bus shelter advertisements where you could lean up against them and get a back rub. Now you should be thinking as a brand, hey, if there's brands out there giving people back rubs with their advertising, is our advertising falling short of changing expectations. So that's trend number one. How can you deliver just a moment of ambient wellness? How can you catch consumers as they're going about their busy days and help bring them just that bit closer to their desired mental or physical um, health levels? Okay, ready for trend number two, calibrated health. Get ready for the age of individualization when it comes to health and wellness. Now, back in 1999, Nike launched Nike ID, sorry, Nike, I've got to say it like an American, not a Brit, <laughs> uh, launched their platform where you can customize your footwear, and we've gone from active customization, where you make the choices yourself, to passive customization. Last year, Spotify launched its you know, widely celebrated Discover Weekly feature, so they use your data to give you a personal mixtape every week. Now, consumers have experienced you know, active personalization, they've experienced passive personalization in uh, fashion, in media and entertainment, and they're hearing about companies like 23andMe, who now have FDA approval to provide health information based on DNA analysis of your saliva swab. So 23andMe has hit a few bumps in the road. Um, there's a few legal loopholes they have to jump to, and understandably for such a serious 
uh, pursuit, but consumers are hearing about it and they're thinking, hey, where is my DNA personalized protein shake that's finally gonna help me look like this guy down here? But it's not just about DNA. In fact, consumers are ready for all kinds of uh, innovations that allow them to personalize and finely tune to calibrate their health and wellness products and services. So there's a twofold gain here for the consumer. First of all, it, in theory, is more effective, it's better for you if it's calibrated to your unique mind and body. But secondly, it gives you that little status boost. If you had the DNA tailored protein shake, it's certainly something you can brag about to the guy who has the off the shelf version. But our first example is uh, using far less complicated ingredients, has an incredible uh, user interface. I highly recommend checking out this website, Vita Mojo. It's a salad restaurant in London where you can use these uh, sliders to adjust the exact portions of each of the ingredients in your salad. And as you do that, you can watch the nutrition facts, such as the ratio of fat to protein um, and the overall calorie content shift. So that is a finely tuned salad. Now think about how that's gonna change anyone who eats there's expectations and what a nightmare they're gonna be when they come to your restaurant and they can't finely tune their salad and calibrate their health in your establishment. Our next innovation is product-based. Now, you know, custom insoles have been around for a long time, so why did this company, Weave, raise a quarter of a million dollars on Indiegogo? That's because you don't have to go into the store here. You don't even have to see a specialist. You can just download their app, take five photos of your feet from different angles, and they'll send you your customized insoles to help you run faster, to help you achieve you know, that desired version of yourself. It's not just about you know, food and beverage or products, even your daily schedule. So Design My Day is a company that crowdsourced ideas to help people who are depressed or feeling unmotivated calibrate a personal schedule that will help them you know, climb out of their funk and beat their depression. So there's all kinds of ways that you can apply this trend to calibrate healthcare. And uh, a really exciting area is uh, around the microbiome. So Ubiome is a company, it's almost like 23andMe for your microbiome. Now, many of you may have heard the microbiome is the new sort of it area in health and wellness and medicine. They're beginning to think more and more of our symptoms and ailments are you know, impacted or reduced by the bacteria that live in our gut and on our skin and all over us. Um, and you can get these kits from Ubiome so you can see how your biome measures up against other people, against vegetarians, against alcoholics. And you can also see how it changes over time. So you can calibrate your behavior to alter your biome. Uh, true story, I actually got my dad one of these kits as a Christmas present. So this is the 21st century where you can give someone a stool sample kit for Christmas. <laughs> All right, so could you let customers fine tune your offering to provide them with extra health benefits and that you know bundled in status boost. Okay, trend number three, virtual actualization. We've got a trend. This is where virtual realities are gonna lead to real phys physical, cognitive, emotional improvements. And I know what you're thinking. Yes, there's a boom in VR this year, you know, HTC Vive. PlayStation VR and of course, you know, the big daddy Oculus Rift are getting into consumers' hands and on their faces this year and spending's going from 108 million in 2014 to 22 billion in 2020. So yes, this is a big trend, but isn't it just limited, limited to uh, gaming and pornography? Well, no, of course not. Uh, VR offers, you know, new levels of immersion for users so they can uh, explore these new horizons to develop their physical fitness, their emotional well-being, their empathy, their cognitive performance, and you know, experience personal growth, experience real self-actualization. So who's already innovating within this arena? Our first example is the Ver Zoom, an exercise bike that facilitates virtual reality workouts with interactive games. So you put your, uh, your headset on, your visor on, and you start pedaling away, and you have uh, two buttons on either hand so you can fire weapons. Uh, in one of the games I've seen, 
you are riding on the back of a horse and you can lasso other people and you can, you can control the speed of your horse by pedaling faster. So clearly a lot more fun than pedaling a stationary bike alone in your basement. Cerebrum, this is the world's first virtual reality brain training game. So you take the role of these spirits who are fighting to earn the approval of the gods by proving your, um, you know, using tasks related to memory, your ability to focus, your ability to multitask, so I would do really badly there, and you know, general cognitive uh, improvements will arise while playing this game. And this is just a brilliant example from Samsung, who uh, found 27 participants uh, with real life fears, such as a fear of heights or a fear of public speaking, and then they did a four week virtual reality sort of training program where they put them in virtual experiences. So you would gradually be brought up to a higher height. Um, you would gradually present to a bigger crowd if you had a fear of public speaking. And they found real world results from these virtual instances of tackling your fears. So what a wonderful initiative there. And then an example from a university in Japan who are creating virtual reality experiences that mimic natural disasters. And this isn't just to freak you out, this is actually so if you experience a natural disaster in real life, if you've done one of these virtual reality uh, versions, you're kind of mentally better prepared, you're going to be calmer and react and you know, be able, better prepared to get to safety. So how exciting is that? You know, many brands are going to ride the VR wave in 2016, but beyond gaming, beyond pornography, can your VR campaign offer self-actualization? Okay, Woo. halfway there, that's three trends down. We've got three trends to go, let's keep pedaling, let's keep pushing on. Number four, impact indicators. This is about instant and useful real-time feedback on health and wellness impacts, and useful is the key word there. Now, old school impact indicators might be your bathroom scale, which waits till you get back from your Christmas holidays to tell you uh, the degree uh, of body deterioration that you've experienced. And then more recently, of course, we've seen this boom in you know, consumers embracing wearable tech and the quantified self, even last year, spending on um, wearable fitness trackers such as Fitbit or the Apple Watch doubled from 2014. But consumers aren't stopping there. They don't just want numbers, uh, you know, the number of steps that they've walked each day. The quantified masses want more information. They want it to be delivered seamlessly. They want it instantly. They want it you know, with more detail from all variety of sources. And of course, it has to be useful. This information is useless if it doesn't actually lead to results and improvements. It has to motivate the wearer. So let's look at some unique and surprising examples of impact indicators. Um, what about something that stops you from getting sunburned or you know, eventually leading towards skin cancer. La Roche-Posay is a light UV patch. Uh, I believe this is a French company. And you slap this thing on your skin and when you go out to the beach, you can, um, you'll be alerted that will turn into the shape of a heart that you've spent too long in the sun and it's time to find some shade. And of course, uh, how about children? If you're trying to avoid your children getting sunburned and you want them to realize the impact of spending too long in the sun, uh, you could do worse than use these brilliant dolls created by Nivea in Brazil. These dolls, when you bring them to the beach, will turn pink when they've been in the sun too long. So teaching at a young age children the impact of uh, spending too long uh, in bright sunshine. That doll on the right looks like he's going to be very uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't know why he is smiling like that. But okay, moving on. So Oral-B created the genius toothbrush. Now. Uh, you know, I'm sure I'm amongst many of you in and I could probably improve my brushing technique. And this doesn't just, um, you don't have to go to the dentist for this. You literally sort of use a sucker pad to put your iPhone on your bathroom mirror. It then sort of films you. And as you rotate the brush, the accelerometers and the camera um, convey to the app exactly which tooth you're brushing, at what angle, with what pressure and for how long. So quite an insane amount of detail in terms of improving how you brush your teeth, but many consumers will embrace this and it will help them have a healthier and whiter smile for longer. Well, I didn't mean to sound like a salesman there. 
Okay, progress. Who said selfies uh, couldn't change the world? This is an app where, you know, as you're beginning, say, a month, uh, a month of going to the gym and you want to track your progress, a really, really good way to see visual results is through this app where it, it overlays your selfies as you progress through the month. So each day you take a picture and you can see the change happen before your eyes, hopefully in the right direction. And this is a sort of similar kind of idea, except this is a smart mirror that shows you your impact in real time. So the other one, you actually you get the impact over time as you work out. But this is something you can install in a gym. It's a $5,000 smart mirror that you know, recognizes which exercises you're doing, how much weight you're lifting. It counts how many reps you're doing. It times how long you take between reps. And then as a gym member, you can save that information to your personal profile and see how you're progressing. You can even share that information with a personal trainer. So you can see how these impact indicators are helping you become a better version of yourself. So what are the health impacts of your offering? How can you better communicate that to consumers in real time? You know, we're not just talking about uh, a, a glorified pedometer on your wrist. What bad decisions can you help consumers avoid making by alerting them to the impact in creative and compelling ways? All right, trend number five, distributed diagnosis. So this is about new and innovative and seamless ways to access health and wellness services. Now, consumers are really, really, really demanding. They get extremely upset. Maybe you can blame the on-demand economy, blame whomever you want, but the fact is, if you're not there the moment they need you, they lose it. And at the end of last year, you may have seen in our five trends for 2016 briefing, we published contextual omnipresence. How it's not about you know being everywhere all the time, but it's about using new layers of context, such as consumers' location or their emotional state or you know their income levels, along with innovative new channels, particularly channels that your competitors aren't using to be at at the right place at the right time. So that's one way to keep you know ever more needy consumers happy. But let's look at that through a lens of health and wellness, in particular in terms of channels. That's what distributed diagnosis is all about. It's about providing traditional health services, tests and treatments through innovative new channels that are more convenient for consumers, that you're there at the right place at the right time. And consumers, are, they're ready and waiting for you to experiment and make this better for them. 70% of people say they'd rather have a virtual consultation than an office visit to obtain a doctor's prescription. That's a massive, massive indication that they're willing to embrace new technology and new channels to get better access to health services. And I'm not going to present a bunch of telepresence apps to you, although there's a lot of innovation in this area. area. At Trend Watching, uh, we like to show you some more surprising innovations that you perhaps haven't seen yet, like this fantastic example from the Matsumoto Apple Association in Japan. Um, every now and again, our spotters from our spotter network send us something that stops the content team in their tracks. And this was one of those examples. We couldn't stop talking about it. These are apples that you can bite into uh, in four places. Then you scan a QR code and send your bite mark, uh, images of your bite marks to, uh, through the app. And within 24 hours, you get a personal dental consultation based on the data within those bite marks. So that is a fantastic new channel on Apple as a channel for a dental visit. Vodacom um, wanted to provide a way for people who typically don't have access to or don't even consider testing their hearing. So they created and promoted this app that hears bizarre, and this was uh, distributed on a sort of national hearing day, and they had nine, wait, hang on, how, how many is that? I can almost remember, 9,000 people use this within the first month. So that's 9,000 people getting hearing tests who probably wouldn't have done it otherwise. That's the value of distributed diagnosis, reaching consumers who you might not typically have reached before. This example from China is from a dairy brand who wanted to can, you know, share the sort of health benefits of their products, and they created these bus handles. So busy commuters who don't even have the time to check their Fitbit simply grab a hold of one of these handles, 
um, as they're steadying themselves on the bus, and it will show them their body mass index <laughs> and also measure their heart rate. I'm sure a couple people were a little too shy to grab the handle in front of others. However, what's really exciting about this was you could share that information to your smartphone um, and, and store it in an app and see how those numbers changed over time. So as you progress toward that self-actualization, you could track it on your commute to work. So that was really all about new channels for diagnosing health conditions for consumers and helping them understand you know, where there might be room for improvement. Um, don't forget the other side of contextual omnipresence, all about using new context to better understand the needs of your consumers so you can be there at the right time. Okay, wow, we've made it. We are ready for the final trend, post-demographic health. Now, when lift like a girl is trending as a hashtag, you know, as a rallying cry, as a celebration rather than a you know, derogatory term, uh, you recognize some change is afoot, as I said earlier. Uh, regular readers will know all about post-demographic consumerism. And if you've not read this briefing or the sequel, Post-Demographic Imperatives, um, they really are must-read reports. And now I'm biased, but it's all about how um, consumers aren't behaving according to their age or their race or their gender and the typical assumptions that marketers, and product designers, and uh, brands make about them based on those demographics. So here we're going to end this briefing by looking you know, through the lens of healthcare. So throw out the old thinking on who will want to engage with your health and wellness products, services, and experiences and embrace a more diverse, fragmented, and chaotic and you know, satisfying for the consumer's reality. So obviously, in healthcare, things like age still play an impact. The elderly, bless them, do need more access to healthcare. But on the whole, this is about you know, opening your mind. You're making assumptions. Right now, you have an assumption about who your consumer is. And my challenge to you is to question it. Uh, Moon and Sun is a brand who probably recognize that men are the fastest growing segment of yoga practitioner in North America. So this Brooklyn-based yoga wear label creates um, you know, breathable, flexible fabrics designed for male yogis. Now, Public Dance Classics is a, is a crazy app. So some of you may have read about uh, how in China, um, and they, they, they're called grannies, elder, older women, and that's not my term for them, that's a common term for them. But older women go out into public squares, they fire up some loud music on a boombox, and they do these big synchronized dance routines. So Public Dance Classics, the developer realized that it wasn't just the elderly who'd want to learn how to do these, so they created an app with 30 videos of the routines that young people, old people, all kinds of people can learn how to dance uh, in this manner. I just love that innovation. And it's not just about breaking your assumptions around age or gender, it's also about understanding in a post-demographic landscape, you're better off targeting consumers by their interests and their ideals rather than those you know, demographic assumptions. So Mandarin Oriental Barcelona, this is such a simple idea. Um, how has it not been thought of before? They created a holiday package uh, for you know, participants of the Barcelona Marathon. So if you love running marathons, it doesn't matter if you're a man, woman, or what your age is. If you can afford the Mandarin Oriental, obviously, you get access to spa treatments, um, five days with a personal trainer, and other things bundled into this tailored package you know, that meets your interests and not necessarily your demographic. Now, uh, our final example of the presentation shows you that innovation doesn't have to happen externally. Beyond your products, your marketing, your experiences, another way to delight consumers is to have a healthy and happy internal culture that matches their values. So Netflix are embracing post-demographic health by providing employee benefits that cover gender reassignment, treatment, surgery, therapy, and all the rest of it. So that is a, a series of brands that should inspire you to, to question the assumptions you make about your customers based on their demographic markers. Right, so we went through a whole bunch there. It's a lot to take in. I forgive you if you didn't catch it all the first time around, but the real overarching message is health and wellness as consumers you know, move up that pyramid and, and pursue self-actualization will only become more important in their lives and their lifestyles in the coming years. 
And really, it's up to you to act, because if you're not providing self-actualization, someone else is, and consumers will reward them with their love and uh, money. <laughs> so, of course, betterment fits into a much bigger picture. It's just one piece of the always changing consumer landscape. As I already mentioned, we have 16 other mega trends. So if you're interested in seeing the future of status, the future of um, local love, the future of how uh, our increasingly digitized lives are impacting consumers, the future of pricing, and many more mega trends, then that's something you get access to as a premium client. So if you want to join, 1,200 brands from eBay to Estee Lauder, from Google to Gucci, get access to the trend report, the database, uh, our quarterly industry updates and our methodology, do shoot Ellie at trendwatching.com an email. And two more things to say, um, we're back with our uh, beloved trend events. We're gonna be in Singapore, Sydney, Chicago, London and Amsterdam later this year. The early bird tickets are available now, so get going, check that out if you're near one of those cities. If you aren't and you're in North America, um, you know, you can bring me to you. I come and I do internal keynotes, I speak at conferences, I do workshops, and of course, if you're ever in New York and you wanna grab a coffee, shoot me an email at max at trendwatching.com. And the same goes for questions about the trends that we talked about today just so that you can get back to your jobs or your um, home lives. Uh, we're we're going to wrap up now, but if you do have any questions, do email me. Please do email me, max at trendwatching.com, or find me at Twitter. It's just uh, Max Luthy, M-A-X-L-U-T-H-Y is my Twitter handle. And uh, yeah, of course, if you'd like a copy of this deck as well, do shoot me an email, and I'll fire that over to you. Uh, as well. So you're probably exhausted right now. I'm certainly tired from that, but you can't sit down and rest. It's time to get going, get out there, get innovating, and help consumers achieve their self actualization. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope to see you at the next one.